motivation. It is our day to talk about sleep and stress reduction. Got a little bit of a camera angle issue here. We're going to start off on the right foot this Monday, though. We started off, kicked off with an amazing boot camp class this morning. I got to give my, my boot campers a lot of credit, a lot of breakthroughs, uh, fresh week. Uh, it was really exciting this morning because everybody's seeing some of the fruits of their labors um, as far as it goes with, you know, how it really takes time once you initiate something in life to see the results. The negative stuff we've been doing for years and years and years and stacking on, whether it's weight gain, lack of sleep, stress, uh, you know, undue stresses in relationships, whatever it is, takes years to build up to this mountain and then everybody thinks oh we're just gonna come along and poof, in a week I'm gonna go to boot camp for a week and I'm gonna lose all this weight that it took me five years to put on or you know my marriage has been on the rocks for five years I'm gonna just go home and say hey let's start over and everything's gonna be okay and not put any effort into it no that's not the case you know you showing up with me at 7 30 every Monday morning uh, getting up at the hour I got to get up to do this for you the effort and time that goes into preparing these and the trainings. You know, we spend maybe, you know, anywhere between 15 to 45 minutes together on a Monday morning, and you get that 30 or 40 minute, sometimes an hour training video, and you think that's what goes into it? Oh, heck no, guys. There's hours and hours of research and creation and editing and everything else to make this stuff come true. I mean, obviously, we're not editing this this morning. It is what it is. If I screw up, I tongue twist, I lose my train of thought or something, bam -o, you're seeing it live. But on the training videos, there's a lot of effort and time that goes into all of this. Is it worth it? Heck yeah. If you tell me, hey, coach, a couple of things have really changed my life, it's all worth it. That's the whole concept of what we're trying to do here with the Monday Motivation, the H1 series is we're getting you to take action and that's what it's all about now we're going to talk about some action here today because this there's two subjects that have become a real buzzword in today's society but are very real one is stress the other is sleep deprivation if you can tell me you suffer from neither of these ever we're lying to ourselves if you can tell me I'm never stressed out or you know there's no, no stress or you're telling me I'm too stressed to function, both are big lies. If you tell me I can get, a, get away with four hours sleep a night every single night all the time like I used to believe, that's a lie. If you tell me, hey, I get eight hours sleep a night because that's what everybody tells me to get and that's good for my body, that's a lie. And you're going, all right, really? Here we go. We're going to bust up all this stuff. We're going to bust up the sidewalk. Now we can't cross over to you know, our normal path and our normal pattern of going where we're going to go. Yes, amen. That's what we're doing here this morning. We're going to bust up some myths. We're going to create some simple solutions, bring it down to earth, bring it to reality of what it's really all about, this sleep and stress management thing. So let's hit on sleep first. Okay, so what does sleep really do for us? You know, I mean, obviously we all can go, we probably don't get enough for our quality of sleep isn't the greatest. Some people are sleeping amazing. Some people sleep really deep. Some people don't wake up once during the night. Some people, especially if you're a guy, you might wake up a couple of times during the night and go use the bathroom. Uh, maybe a girl too, but you know, what is your sleep pattern right now? So let's cover what sleep does for us real quick. Sleep allows our bodies to regenerate and repair. Regenerate cells, regenerate tissues, repair damaged cells, repair damaged tissues, and it also helps our brain with our neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is the brain's ability to grow, not necessarily size-wise, we don't want our head popping, but to keep the growth connections going to where we're constantly keeping the brain sharp because if the brain is allowed to not grow, if you don't educate it, use it, exercise it, nourish it with the proper foods, like you know, in some of the past posts you may have seen, if not, get back and watch them, the brain will start to degenerate. We don't want to do that. We want to create more neurological connections. 
more quickness, more sharpness. So neuroplasticity is an important factor. You can study up on that. I'm not going to go into the whole science of that today because we're not going to sit here all day long because you don't want to hear my voice that long today. You just want to take something out of this, put it to use, and get to work. So sleep allows your body to recover from injury, whether that is you've been in a car accident, hurt at work, uh, tripped and fell, or simply did a really good workout and you have all those little micro tears in the muscle that need to be repaired. So it helps your body recover. Also, very important, while you're sleeping, your body toxins out the toxins from the day, the waste buildup, because while you're at rest, your body allows to flush out and get rid of that stuff. So you're going, yeah, let me get more sleep. This is probably a good thing. It's probably a really good thing if you're only getting four hours a night. If you're getting eight hours, you know, we got to talk because you're probably still waking up and feeling like crap and going, but I'm getting my eight hours, coach. Now we're going to bust up that one and give you a couple little shortcuts today. Um, you know, I've got to tell you, of course, give you a quick disclaimer here that these are my opinions. I am teaching you this. Go do be a self-study. Always pass by your medical professional any information or what you want to do if you're going to do any kind of dietary self-help or exercise program. Get their clearance. Uh, statements we may make today are not necessarily approved by the FDA. So do your research. You are taking responsibility for anything you take away from today and use. But we got a lot of cool stuff. Take away what you need. Put it to use. Test it out. Do your research and let's rock. So the other thing that gets cleansed while you're sleeping is your brain. It actually does. It has a cleansing system that cleanses out the toxins, the buildups, everything else. And that's the physical cleansing. The mental cleansing is your dreaming. It's, as far as I'm concerned, dreaming is a mental cleanse, especially of fear. Um, and bear with me on this. So, so work with me. You go to bed. Everything's okay. You got stuff on your mind, whatever. You have a really bad nightmare, okay? You wake up. And what's the first thing you go, oh, I'm okay. It was just a nightmare. But a lot of times those nightmares may have to do with things that you fear, consciously or subconsciously. But all of a sudden we wake up and go, oh, I'm okay. It was just a dream or it was just a nightmare. So that is a form of mental cleansing there. So this, these are the important parts of sleep. Now, let's get into lack of sleep and what it can do to you. It has a myriad of physical and emotional disorders can come from it. If it's slightest slow motor skills, accident prone, inflammation, illness, weight gain, allergies that you never had before showing up all of a sudden because your body is not able to recover if you don't have either enough or enough quality of sleep. Vision tends to be a big indicator. Yeah, I wear glasses and some people do it you know, 12 and some people do it 82 and some people don't. So, but the difference is, is honest to God, if I am tired, my vision quality goes down. If I am not getting proper rest, my vision quality goes down. If I'm getting proper rest, I notice it there first. I'm like, oh yeah, got better clarity. Oh yeah, I got better response reactions. Um, emotionally, lack of sleep, chronic lack of sleep especially can lead to depression, irritability, even hallucinations. In the training video, I give you an example of, of a night that, you know, the lack of sleep and overwork and over-caffeinating actually gave me some hallucinations. And so watch the uh, training video to, to hear that story. It's kind of cute and kind of funny, and I was really young, but it holds true that it does affect your, your psychological state big time. So the big buzzword, buzz hour, is eight hours sleep. Get your eight hours sleep, 12 hours if you're a kid. And if you don't get that, you're in trouble. Truth is, whether you claim you can get by on four hours sleep or you claim you're getting your full eight hours, you're probably not doing well at either one of those. So what's going on here? How do we shortcut this? How do we go with this without going into a full coaching session here, which I am available for. I'm certified sleep sciences coach as well as a certified stress management coach. So if you have big things going on and you need help with that, I'd be happy to be your coach or help you find somebody you meld with for that. But let's get into it. The reason that eight hours sleep is not the number and four hours ain't going to cut it either is our bodies operate on a 90 to 110 minute sleep cycle. 90 being kind of the magic number for most people. 
you got your level one sleep, that's where you're kind of asleep, but you could be woken up easily, and you may immediately have a little bit of dreaming going on there. Then you go into two and three, into your deep formless sleep where you're out cold. You're not dreaming, you're not moving, your body temperature comes down. Then you go into your REM sleep where your body temperature goes up, your eyes are moving, you're dreaming vividly, uh, you can wake up, you can be woken up a whole lot easier. So if you woke up in that level two or level three sleep, you're groggy, confused, it's like, what, what the hell just happened? You wake up during or after that, at the end of that REM sleep cycle, you wake up and you're ready to go. You're at the end of that cycle, you're about out. So if you ever slept six hours in a night and felt great and thought, oh, I didn't get enough sleep because I didn't get my eight hours, that then when you sleep eight hours, you feel like you hadn't slept at all. Well, that's why you're coming out of the wrong sleep cycle. So this is important, more important than anything else. The timing is oftentimes more important than the quantity. Am I suggesting you get one 90 minute sleep cycle and that's it for night and you can survive on that? No, it's not enough time to regenerate. What I could tell you is when it comes to napping, watch out with the 20 minute power nap. You're in level two sleep. You're gonna be a cranky SOB when you wake up. page and we have continued to be live on my personal page so back into where we were so these are the reasons that that sleep cycle is more important so what we covered real quick guys if you missed out on the recording side on the replay of this what we covered on the live in the meantime was that if you were to take a nap the 20 minute power nap doesn't cut it 90 minutes would be really the the key to that would get you through a sleep cycle if you're going to nap now, there's a shortcut to that called Paziz, and if you need more information on that, come talk to me, because we can definitely figure out on the Paziz app how you calculate real time as opposed to Paziz time, because it accelerates that. But that's a whole subject for another day. And so one of the biggest problems facing most people these days is insomnia. There's hundreds, if not thousands, of reasons for insomnia. So, you know, and without being a medical doctor and doing a sleep study on you to diagnose it, here are some of the most prevalent that you could have, though. One could be uh, eating too late at night, consuming stimulants too late in the day, too much coffee, too much caffeine, drinking alcohol. It's one of the biggest sleep disruptors there is. It does not allow you to complete your sleep cycles properly. So even though people go, oh, if I have a glass of wine before bed, it relaxes me, or if I have a few beers, it relaxes me, and they start to self-medicate, you're cheating yourself out of the proper cycles of sleep. So drinking alcohol before bed is not good. If you're going to have a glass of wine or something, do it earlier, you know, with dinner, and give yourself plenty of hours for that alcohol to be out of your system before you get into bed. So that's important. Too much blue light, that is a big buzzword right now, the blue light. It's the truth. I'm sitting in front of screens. You're sitting in front of a screen. Uh, use your settings that reduces the blue light, especially at night. And don't watch the damn phone, tablet, TV, computer screen for at least one hour before you're going into bed. I can't, I can't tell you enough of that. Number one, there's stimulating things on there, whether you're watching YouTube, you're taking a class, you're watching a drama on TV, uh, you're talking to friends, you've got your nose buried in base, Facebook. I love Facebook for some things, obviously we're broadcasting on it, but you know, the people that just sit there and scroll and scroll and scroll, we all know them. And it's like, come on guys, seriously? Get off that phone, you're not even enjoying it. Hey, I enjoy looking at Facebook sometimes and catching up with everybody and you know, taking a minute to be involved and connect with everybody. I love it. But some people just are so pre-programmed that that's all they do is scroll. And you can see the look on their face that nothing's stimulating them. It's just a stimulation of scrolling it. Make it something special. When you're going to go on social media, make it worthwhile. Enjoy it. Limit it to a certain amount of time, though. And certainly not before bed because you're going to get stimulated. Something political. Let's face it, we own all agree on something, something political, something uh, about a family member that pisses you off or makes you happy, but you get the adrenaline flowing, 
you're not going to sleep as well. So these are critical, critical factors in insomnia, and there's a whole lot more. So also stress and overthinking things before bed. Oh, yeah, that can be an issue with sleep. So sleep hygiene and sleep time are the two factors. Sleep time being, you know, try to be on that 90 to 110 minute cycle. So, you know, if I wake up, I get up at 4.30 some mornings. If I've got to be up at 4.30 and I wake up at 3, 3 to pee, that's kind of a joke. Uh, you know, and I might catch my watch and go, oh, yeah, hey, I've got an hour. Oh, this is going to be good. I'm already psyched up because I know I'm going to lay back down and I'm going to come out of my, my proper sleep cycle. If I wake up at 4.10... I'm staying up. You're going, you're crazy. Oh, I'm going to get that last 20 minutes. You will do more damage to your day, more damage to your state of being by laying back down for that last 20 minutes. If you wake up in less than that full sleep cycle, you know, and I'm not saying if, you, if you've got 88 minutes that you can go back to sleep for, that's close enough. But what I am saying is if you've only got 15 or 20 minutes from the time you're supposed to get up and you wake up, get up get up get started you'll thank yourself because you have a whole lot more day and i love that because you know the stress of time constraints tends to get to you too but if you get up wake up within reason sleep hygiene no blue light no computers no nothing for the last hour if you want to listen to some music make it something that relaxes you and not everybody's the same with that. Some people like different music, makes them relax. Just don't get anything that makes you sad, depressed, angry, or super motivated right before bed. Now, some, it's like some music might make you motivated for some things that might make you ready for bed. Just saying. But, you know, do your thing. Whatever it is, create your own sleep hygiene, your environment. Keep it dark keep it cool, warmer, whatever gets you the best night's sleep. And I could go on with this stuff for hours and we could get very individualized for you on this. So that stress before bed is going to lead us right into that stress reduction or stress relief. might sound like the same stuff, but it is all designed to take stress away from you or to take away the damage it's doing, but they are two very distinctly different things because stress reduction is getting rid of the stress before beforehand, before it happens, planning, you know, taking care of some things and, you know, not procrastinating and stuff like that, leaving early to get to work or wherever you're going, that kind of stuff is, you know, preventative of stress. Some stresses, like I use the example in the training video of the uh, Wall Street trader, they're going to be in a high stress position all day, auctioneer, when we get done, boom, 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 you know, we're like, oof, get off the block, you're going 100 miles an hour you got to get some stress relief. So there is a difference. The stress reduction is prevention. Stress relief is something you do after the fact to help combat the effects of stress that you cannot necessarily reduce or eliminate up front. So the positive is this. Um, positive stress relievers would be proper planning or proper stress reduction would be proper planning, massage as a, as a stress reliever, something like that, as opposed to uh, negative stress reductions would be like, oh, I've had a rough day, I've got to have a beer, I've got to go out for a smoke because the boss got on my ass. Those are negative. Will they take you out of stress temporarily? Yeah. Will they end up giving you probably a whole lot more stress in life? Yeah. So that's the difference. Positive is something that has no downside and it relieves or reduces the stress. The negative is something that will in the short term reduce or relieve the stress but has a negative effect on the body or the emotional, uh, your emotional health. Stress reducers that you can use, uh, some examples, deep breathing. When you're breathing down into your belly, down into here, you oxygenate better. It helps you get your cells what they need, which is more oxygen. When you're stressed out, if you ever notice you're breathing here. Do you ever watch a kid when they're really upset and they're crying? It's all up there. Do you ever notice? If you can get them to go, breathe, get out, and they go, oh, I feel better. Okay. Meditation. Meditation or prayer. I like to use these interchangeably because... If you're praying, 
It's a form of meditation. And if you're meditating, it's great. You know, throw some prayer in there. You know, it's a great way to meditate and get centered and get back to what's important to you, what's in your heart and soul. And it closes out the outside world. You can't meditate and still have your ringer on your phone or your beeper on for your to see if somebody's going to post something on Facebook, you know, that's meaningless anyway. Turn on airplane mode, put on some relaxing music, or leave your phone in the other room and pray or do your meditation. doesn't mean you change your religion because you're going to meditate. Just means you take some quiet time to slow the thoughts down, clear your head. Reading, reading's great, whether it's fiction, nonfiction, whatever takes you out of the, the moment of reality for a little while will reduce stress. Not the news, guys. News is designed to stress you out, work you up. Stay away from the news except for the bare minimum to know what's really going on. Exercise is an amazing stress reducer. And this happens physiologically even more than mentally because it produces the hormones and uh, gets your body to feel good. Your feel-good hormones come out and you can't help but feel better when you exercise. It's just physiologically and then psychologically it's, it has a myriad of positive helps too. Yoga is great. Massage is amazing. It relaxes you but it also helps the body to detox making sure you're drinking plenty of water afterwards. Sex, the S word, great for stress reduction. You know, there again, that should take you out of reality. You shouldn't be, you know, with your mate and still going, oh, let me check Facebook real quick here. Uh, you know, let me have the TV on during, you know, that's, if you're doing that, something's not, you know, you don't have that connection, but that's a great way to shut out the rest of the world. And by all means, do turn your phones off or do put them in the other room. Don't let anything interrupt that time with, with your spouse. You know, that's, that, that just ruins stuff. Uh, take a break and treat yourself. You know, some people like, you know, some you might go for pedicure, facial, massage, uh, go even watch a good movie. You know, it doesn't mean that, you know, sometimes I get a little hard on TV and media and that. It doesn't mean that that's not, or play a video game or whatever. It doesn't mean you can never do that. You just can't live in that as your mainstay. The TV shouldn't be on. If you're not physically watching it and engaged in watching it and really enjoying something, don't put it on for background noise because you're letting crap go in your head that, you know, is useless. Because if you really don't want to pay attention to it, don't listen to it. Don't have it on in the first place. Music is better because you can control, especially these days, what you're going to hear. You don't have to hear every other commercial on public radio. Uh, get yourself Spotify or something like that. It's free. I mean, I don't recommend the free one personally for the couple of bucks a month. Pay for the thing without commercials that you can really, truly tailor your own playlist. But that is huge stress reduction. Music is going to score your life for wherever you want to be at that moment. Um, you know, so the whole thing on stress is understand if you take away something and make sure you do the lesson today. Make sure you do the full training video. Understand the difference between stress reduction and stre and uh, yeah okay so here's the deal stress relief you understand the difference between stress reduction is upfront stress relief is something that relieves the effects of stress uh, quick story uh, my nieces are down from New York and we were at Epcot all day yesterday so did I sleep well did I sleep enough it was yesterday very tiring being out in the heat all day and getting everybody from the airport and you know it was very intense and very exciting to see everybody awesome day did it physically put some stress on my body and, and emotionally even if it wasn't negative stress it was still a stress so when I have a moment like that where I'm going but I can't think of the word I was about to say that's an effect of improper sleep I did not sleep as much as I normally would have, nor did I the night before because I was working on a project. But I also did not get great quality sleep because I was still wound up and excited while I was extremely physically overtired. So it does affect you. And there's living proof. I couldn't even think of what I just taught. And I really could. And I knew what I wanted to say, but the words slipped me. Those are the kind of things where you start to go, all right, stress or lack of sleep is really affecting me in my daily output 
am I forgetful? Am I clumsy? Am I irritable? Am I foggy? Stuff like that, that's a warning sign that either your sleep or your stress or a combination of the two are not in line. Ah, see, got this. And your drive will get you through most of it. I mean, once in a while you're gonna have you're gonna have a screwed up night's sleep, you're gonna have stressful emergencies happen that are out of your control. It's how you deal with them. And I use some examples in the training video that you'll see on this page of you know stuff that comes at you that's out of your control. You know, I'm not gonna tell you you're gonna just go home and it's okay. You're gonna have stuff coming at you more than you want ever. I guarantee you you're gonna have more than you ever want coming at you but how you handle it, process it, how you initially handle the stress and how you reduce it and how you reduce the effects of it through stress relief and making sure you're getting proper rest. So reach out to me, I'd love to do coaching with you on this. If you need more help with it guys, this is one of my specialties. And if not me, let me help you find somebody to meld with if you need. We can do coaching live here in, in, in the studio here at Studio 700, Detached to Revitalize Life Fitness. Um, or we can do it via the internet, like where you're seeing me right now. We can sit face to face and talk about this and create a plan. So even if you're not local and you go, man, I'd love to do this, let's do it. Let's get it going. So I'm going to cut shoot to short today, guys. It's not going to be as long because the training video is pretty long and pretty example filled. But I highly recommend you watch that follow through and you'll find your stress levels and your sleep are going to be a lot better. You want your stress to go down and your quality of sleep to go up. And in the meantime, till we meet again, I want you to live with energy, passion and always live your dream. If you're local, Get your butt in here for some boot camp and get some fun exercise. If you're not local, connect with me and we'll do some coaching together. And if you're on a major high role in life and all you need is to watch these videos each week and that's helping you and you need nothing more than that, reach out to me and just let me know if there's anything we can do to serve you even better. Have an amazing day, guys. Live with energy, passion. Always live your dream. Coach Lou signing off.